Hey guys, welcome back to today's video. Today is Thursday, August 10th, 2023, and today we are going to be talking about the 2024 House elections and a leaked memo from the Democratic Congressional Campaign Committee, think DNC for the House Democrats, with this memo that was leaked to the Washington Post that reveals their strategy to beat vulnerable Republicans in the 2024 House elections. Now, rarely do we ever get any insight into how campaigns work, especially in the front of what this memo has decided to reveal to us for the 2024 race. Essentially, they have laid out their strategy to associate the vulnerable mainstream Republicans that are lesser known, but still the more uh, moderate, more uh, less extreme uh, uh, Republicans in their party, tying them to the extremists, tying them to the Marjorie Taylor Greene, Lauren Boeberts of the GOP. They talk about exactly how they're going to do that. And in this opinion piece from the Washington Post, which very clearly leans towards the left in terms of this specific article, it does have a lot of truth to it. In many ways, this DCCC argument and memo that has been leaked is not something that is too lost on us because it was the exact same strategy that was utilized in the 2022 midterm elections. Now, to give you a bit of context as to why I think this memo reveals a winning strategy for the Democratic Party, I point you back to the 2022 midterms where Democrats did quite well. You see, this starts in the 2020 House elections, actually, where we look and see that in the previous races, Democrats didn't do so well. In 2018, they flipped over 40 seats in favor of the Democratic Party, actually, I think exactly 40, going from a very low point, low uh, sub 200 in House control, to 235 to the Republicans, 200. But then came 2020. Democrats were assured that they were going to gain seats in the House of Representatives, but ultimately Republicans had a better ground game. They had a better strategy, and unlike President Trump, they made significant gains when it came down to the House majority. Now, we see here that Democrats led the Republicans 222 to 213, and it just so happens that this time around, Republicans now lead 222 to 213. I think it's uniquely interesting because in 2020, President Biden won 306 to 232. In 2016, Trump won 306 to 232. So it seems we're in for another reversal. But this time around, you know, 2022 was especially different. Because at the time of the November election, President Joe Biden was quite unpopular, to put it simply. He was disapproved of nationwide on election day by a margin of 12 points over the approved. 54% of America believed that Joe Biden was doing a bad job, contrary to just 42% of America that was on his side. And the reason why that's so significant is because the losses Democrats suffered weren't too tremendous. In fact, in some cases, Democrats gained seats from the GOP, notably in the previously solid red state of Alaska. But in many of the toss-up districts, Democrats pulled ahead. In 2020, in every single toss-up district, Republicans won down every single race. And yet in 2022, the Democrats won the majority of them. There were so many districts that Democrats thought they were going to lose, and also many mainstream Republicans also argued that they were going to lose. The Democrats were going to lose up to 60 seats, uh, Kevin McCarthy predicted, a year out from the election. Obviously was wrong. But we see here that the map wasn't too far off from where it should have been. And that 60-seat prediction might seem to be a little far off because Kevin McCarthy, obviously, as the now majority leader at the time, the minority leader for the GOP, was very confident in his abilities and the Republican Party's abilities, largely because they had seen it happen before. In 2010, the Republicans did, in fact, gain over 60 seats in the House of Representatives, went from being at 179 all the way up to 242, larger than where the Democrats were in the 2018 midterm elections. This was a phenomenal victory. And you might be thinking, OK, well, if President Biden only suffered his party, only suffered 10 losses in the House. You really only saw uh, an overall switch from 222 to 213 to 222 to 213. Uh, there must have been something very far off about President Barack Obama's approval rating. He must have been so unpopular that it translated to such a heavy defeat for the Democratic Party. But that actually couldn't be further from the truth. And I bring this up to point out that approval rating isn't everything. In November 2010, Barack Obama was disapproved of by just 5% more of the country than approved of. For a president that was down five points nationwide, it translated to a 60-seat pickup for the Republican Party. And to be fair, Democrats had more room to fall from. Again, the Democrats at this period of time were at 256 seats in the House of Representatives. No redistricting had not occurred. These were very, very good pickups for the Republican Party. But it was largely because the GOP had a more palatable electorate, or I guess campaign strategy. The Tea Party movement, this pushback against President Obama, was very powerful, and turnout was down, but very much up on the GOP side. 
and that translated to this landslide victory for the Republican Party. In 2022, that didn't happen, and it didn't happen for a number of reasons, but largely because the House Democrats, the DCCC, did a phenomenal job at defending many of their incumbents while maintaining strong performances in these battleground districts. How did they do it? Well, I've taken five minutes to get to this point to tell you exactly how. It's the same strategy they're using in 2024, and a lot of it has to do with the issue of abortion. Now, looking at this memo, they first start off with who they are targeting, and this is no secret. As noted in this op-ed, and as we've understood for the past two years, there are targets here, what we call the Biden 18. The 18 Republicans who come from districts that Joe Biden won in the 2020 presidential election, ranging all the way from California to Pennsylvania to Oregon to Virginia, coast to coast, then to middle of America in Nebraska, altogether to say that no matter where you are, there are these districts near you where Joe Biden won, the Republicans currently hold in Congress. And if it was the 2010 midterm elections going into 2012, it might be a different story to talk about the Biden 18. But since the Republican majority is just narrowed down to roughly about five seats here, if five seats had gone in a different direction in 2022, Democrats would be in the House majority. You would find that this 222 to 213 result is very winnable for House Democrats back again in 2024. They absolutely have a pathway to the majority, and it's very clear how they get there. So more on how they are planning to win these districts. Well, we know the who is no secret, but what they are trying to do is exactly what they did in 2022. It was a risk. It was a risk in the sense that they were trying to associate the MAGA extremists, as they put it, uh, with the mainstream, conventional, vulnerable Republicans. They're trying to take the Marjorie Taylor Greens, the Lauren Boberts, the Paul Gosars, the Matt Gates, the Freedom Caucus, the extreme members of the right wing, and associate them with these swing state Republicans, swing district Republicans. And they argue that in 94% of the votes, they align with their extremists, even though many of these votes are party line and largely uh, a big chunk of them are also bipartisan. This number did wonders in 2022. The association of these uh, more palatable Republicans with the extremist Republicans did wonders not only in the, the House races, but in Senate races as well. I also want to remind you of a Senate election that I think really explains this perfectly as to how Democrats have been able to utilize this strategy even when the Republican running against them doesn't fit the stereotype that they are trying to associate with them. Joe Odea in the state of Colorado ran against Michael Bennett in this supposedly competitive Colorado Senate race, a state that had been competitive in the past in 2016 went to Michael Bennett by a margin uh, of, let's see here, of just 5.7%, two years prior to that election, went to the GOP. In 2010, it was decided by a margin of roughly 1.6%. So you see that in 2022, for it to go from 1.6 to 5.7 to 14.6, you might assume the Republican was lackluster, was an extremist, was a Marjorie Taylor Greene type, was, and hailing from the same home state, a Lauren Boebert type. But again, as I have said in many cases, that could not have been further from the truth. Joe Odea was pro-choice. He was pro-gay marriage. He was pro-many things that mainstream Democrats are. At heart and in terms of financial principles, was a conservative, did align with the Republican Party, but was disavowed even by Donald Trump, many other mainstream Republicans. And what we found was that Michael Bennett and the Democratic Party, the Democratic Senate, campaign committee, whatever it is, did a great job at associating Joe Odea with Lauren Boebert, Marjorie Taylor Greene, President Donald Trump, all of these people that are very unpopular in these swing districts in the Biden 18, because quite frankly, they didn't vote for them in the first place. These are the people that you started to see the more moderate, more sensible Republicans associated with, and it's a strategy that worked. It worked in 2022, and Democrats are now hoping that it works again in 2024. And they're going to argue the main thing here, the first thing they mentioned was ripping away women's reproductive freedoms. That's going to stick. What we just saw in Ohio is that that is a winnable issue. What we just saw in Wisconsin in April shows that that was a winnable issue. And again, what that showed in 2022 in those governor races where we saw pickups for Democrats rather than losses is that that is a winnable issue. 
But they take it a step further. They say they're going to go after them cutting service for veterans. Well, where do Republicans typically flaunt their idea of allocation of funds for the military? Well, yet that isn't happening according to this, and this is exactly how they're going to hammer it in. You're ripping away with women's reproductive freedom. The public agrees with Democrats on that. They're going to flip around the defunding of law enforcement, an argument the GOP is trying to make against the Democrats, and they're flipping it on the Republicans. They're also talking about gutting manufacturing jobs. Think about the workforce hubs that the Biden-Harris administration are moving forward with. Those are things that Democrats are single-handedly passing, voting for, and getting implemented. This is why you are going to see all of these points utilized against the, the vulnerable, the centrist-ish, not, in, you know, the 94% number really jumps out here to say it's not centrist, but the more moderate type of Republican in the United States Congress is going to be associated with those who are aligning in the opposite direction, right? Or at least a little bit further or significantly further to the right than they personally align. And again, it is a strategy that was employed in 2022. And I'm telling you now, there's a very solid chance that it works again. And Republicans should be very, very worried. You're also going to see here that, again, this is a strategy that Democrats are going to utilize not only in the congressional races, but on the presidential as well. You are going to find that the DCCC is not alone in this strategy. It will apply to the Senate candidates in Ohio, in Montana, in Nevada, in Arizona, in Pennsylvania, in Michigan, in Wisconsin, in the swing states. It will apply to President Donald Trump, who has been very public recently, that he overturned Roe v. Wade. I can imagine how easily, once the Biden campaign ramps on up, how that will be a major point of contention in 2024. And newsflash, I expect Joe Biden to win re-election because of this issue, amongst many others. But 2022 was a warning sign. These special elections have continued to warn us. It's sort of like waving a red flag here for the GOP. And yet, for some reason, they are so hellbent on uh, in nominating Donald Trump yet again in 2024. In fact, the top two contenders here, Donald Trump, who flaunts the fact that he has overturned Roe v. Wade, Governor Ron DeSantis, who flaunts the fact that he signed a six-week abortion ban, even though the American public does care about other issues, this is one they very clearly care about a lot. And it inspires a base that has turned away from the Republican Party in years where they otherwise should not have. Again, 2022 was a failure for the GOP because the, the national numbers were so good for them. I mean, just looking back at past elections, I cannot hammer in this point more about how 2022 was a complete and total disaster for the mainstream Republicans in 2018. Democrats won the national popular vote by eight points over Republicans. Guess what happened in 2022? Republicans won the national popular vote by two points. That is a 10-point swing in favor of the GOP, and yet the House majority was just barely won, just barely taken away from the Democratic Party after redistricting, which gave Republicans a 100-seat advantage over the Democrats when it came down to partisan control and partisan redistricting. So I think this is just such a fascinating election to reflect upon, but we already saw those warning signs happening with these special elections following the Dobbs decision. Dobbs v. Jackson was that initial starting point, and it continued, continued. The election landed. Democrats demolished Republicans in governor races, in Senate races, and then in the House races did way better than expectations. And then you start to see special elections arise, uh, regularly scheduled elections like the Supreme Court one in Wisconsin and the issue-based ones that we also see now recently in Ohio and expect some to come again happen in 2023. Uh, Ohio also back in the spotlight with an abortion referendum on the ballot. And yet everything is telling us, it's like we're waving this very big 50-foot flag here that this is a losing issue for the Republican Party, that many of their stances are losing issues, and the DCCC is going to take advantage of that. There has been a lot of conversation about how Democrats have been given ample opportunities to defeat Republicans in many competitive races and how they always fumble, they always fail to win over the voter, win over the median electorate. And what we have seen as of late is that no longer applies. This isn't a blanket statement. Republicans can absolutely win and maintain House control in 2024, but as it stands today, those Biden 18 better be scared. And for as long as Democrats know how to run in these elections well, as they did again over the past year and a half, midterms and all, the Republican Party is in a bad position. They are not well equipped. They are not well versed. They do not have messaging, branding, a defense of their stance on abortion. And yet, they are vehement. They are confident that the voters do not care. They're confident that voters will value the economy more than women's reproductive freedoms. 
And that is a mistake they made in 2022. And quite frankly, based off where the economy is going, they aren't on the right track there either. So what I take away from this, from the DCCC, is that yes, they know how to win again. Because they did so a year ago. And they're going to take that energy. They're also going to take the fact that it will be a presidential year with somehow one of the most unpopular potential presidential contenders dominating nationwide in this very, very high up position, very well equipped and well expected to win this primary. This will only help. It's the beginning of a perfect storm that we are seeing nationwide not only on the House level and on the presidential level, but also on the Senate level with the possible entrance of Carrie Lake in Arizona, Matt Rosendale in Montana, the victory of Frank LaRose in Ohio. You have all of these Republicans here that will drag down the ballot on the presidential level, on the Senate level, now on the House level, which you cannot expect a very strong victory for the Republican Party whatsoever, given where we are today. And based on where Democrats are, in their messaging, in their strategy, they are very well on track to win back House control in the 2024 election. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. Make sure to comment down suggestions below. Subscribe on the left if you haven't already and check out the Instagram and Twitter. At the bottom left of the screen, there's also a Discord server for you to go ahead and join. On the screen, there's a video you can watch and then a playlist for my 2024 election analysis videos. Again, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you all tomorrow.